Spider-Man No Way Home is an absolute triumph in the sense that it successfully culminates basically 20 years of Spider-Man movies and honestly makes those old movies better as you could appreciate them more now. Now most people think that this is something that DC is yet again lagging behind with as DC has always been the more multiverse oriented franchise but Marvel is way ahead of them in this at least with the films which is true with the movies but it isn't true with DC as a whole as DC did a very very similar thing to Spider-Man No Way Home in Crisis on Infinite Earth the Arrowverse crossover event with The Flash and Superman. Tyler Hecklin's Superman team up with Brandon Routh's Superman, and then also Tom Welling's Clark Kent had a cameo. And as for The Flash, Grant Gustin, obviously the main Flash, met Ezra Miller's Flash who had a cameo role, and John Wesley Shipp's Flash had a very large role in the crossover, as well as in the Elseworld crossover a year prior. So yeah, DC actually did it first, but it's clear that Marvel did it better, and way, way bigger. No Way Home generated so much more hype, and frankly, so much more money than The Flash's and Superman's equivalents did two years prior that it's not even in comparison, but what if Spider-Man No Way Home, the billion dollar movie beloved by basically everybody, wasn't a Spider-Man movie, but instead it was a different hero's movie, have as many portrayals over the course of the last 20 or 30 years that they could have a movie that is basically the exact same thing as Spider-Man No Way Home. In order to qualify for this, a hero has to have at least three live action portrayals whose actors are still available and obviously uh, still alive, so like Christopher Reeves for Superman is not an option. They also need to have five villains from the franchise, it's three from one of them and two from another, much like three from Maguire films, two from the Garfield films. One of the heroes would be the main character, this is the Tom Holland counterpart, and the movie would take place in his universe, and he would be the youngest and least experienced version of that hero and would learn from the other two who are obviously from alternate universes and are much more experienced and much older. Now going directly off those criteria, it doesn't really work for anybody, there's basically just one hero who it works for, and for the others who I will go over in separate videos, I will have to get a lot looser with the criteria and a lot more liberal with like how strict I am about them, but the one character who it actually does work with very well, for the most part, is the Dark Knight himself, Batman, and it's no surprise that DC's biggest character would have the most live action portrayals and would be the most fitting for a Spider-Man counterpart. But before I start, I want to thank my patrons, Leo Burton, Sadiku Din, and Max Alejandro uh, Sedeno. I don't, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, if, if you want, let me know in the comments down below how you pronounce that. But anyway, uh, thank you for supporting me on Patreon. If you don't, if you want to support me and get some benefits, like a shout out in my all my videos, videos posted a few hours early, but also like it could be even more than that, depending on when I finish the video, relative to when I post it on YouTube, and being able to ask me basically anything, any behind the scenes question, expanding on what I talked about in the video, you could ask me and I will answer. So donate, the link will be in the description down below and in the video cards in the top right corner of the video, so uh, let's begin. So first of all, we have to go over who the three Batman are, starting with the main character, which is Tom Holland's counterpart, who would again, like I said earlier, be the youngest and least experienced version of the character appearing in the film, but also would be the protagonist. And for him, I would have to go with Rob Bat, Bat and Bat, who is going to be appearing in the next Batman movie in like three months, easily the youngest and least experienced version, as this is Batman two years into his career, but in terms of right now in the year 2022, he's easily the least experienced and the youngest, plus he's the most recent, so it makes sense that he would be Tom Holland's counterpart. I don't know yet if he's going to be a good Batman or not, or how he'll compare to the others, but based off the trailers, I think he'll, it's a safe bet that he's going to be a good Batman. He looks like he's dark, visceral, he's badass, he also has a really cool costume, which I really, really like. So I think it's a safe bet that he will be a good Batman, and this would be his third movie in the trilogy, which would come out in like, what, 2026? If they release a, year, a movie every two years, which isn't likely, but it will come out in a couple years, and it would be the culmination of his trilogy, much like it was the culmination of Tom Holland's. The counterpart to Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man would similarly be the last Batman who appeared right before Rob Bad Batten Bad, who also arguably comes from a failed cinematic universe, and that's Ben Affleck's Batman, otherwise known as Batfleck. Now Batfleck, much like Andrew Garfield, always had the potential to be a true, superb version of their respective character, but it was always limited by poor writing, much like Andrew Garfield. His huge frame, his awesome costume from that first movie, and his badassery worked really well, and the darkness too. 
But then he also went and murdered people, which goes against Batman in general, the character. So he was limited by poor writing. There was also his appearances after that where he was, uh, for some reason, just not cool at all. The costume was not cool. He wasn't really badass. I don't know what happened between Batman vs Superman and Justice League, but something made him worse. Now, returning with that same costume from Batman vs Superman and the same build, honestly, with the same badassery, but with more respect for the source material, I think that people will be very hyped for that return, and it would look cool next to a much younger and less experienced Rob Bat, Bat and Bat. And finally, we have Tobey Maguire, a beloved version of the character who had a respected trilogy in the 2000s, which kind of peaked in the second outing, and had incredibly iconic villains that people would really be excited to see return. This description fits both the original Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, as well as the Dark Knight trilogy, as Tobey Maguire's counterpart is Christian Bale who doesn't have a cool way to incorporate the word bat in his name like Batfleck or my favorite raw bat, bat and bat, but I'll, I'll allow it regardless. Christian Bale is a perfect counterpart to Tobey Maguire, and the only thing that isn't perfect is that he's two years younger than Batfleck, but that's really the only thing that's different. There is also the fact that he is a much more grounded and realistic version of the character who is just, he would be completely outclassed by the other two versions of Batman, but I think they could get around that by just making him more badass this time around, making him more agile, maybe, maybe giving him a Batman Beyond inspired suit. I think that is possible, but I do think that all three of these Batman would look cool together. And there is one Batman who is available, but I'm not including him, that's Michael Keaton's Batman. Who I think is just too old to be playing Batman at this point, but also just, uh, he doesn't really fit as well. And if, if there was a fourth Spider-Man in the movie, then I could include him in this one, but I'm limited to just three Batman. And I'd rather go with the three most recent Batman, who are all closer in age, to Michael Keaton, who's like 70 years old at this point. So, uh, those are the three main Batman. Rob Bat, Bat and Bat, Batfleck, and Bat Bale. Yeah, it's lame. Christian Bale. So now we get to the villains. Now, if this was exactly like Spider-Man No Way Home, there would be three villains from the Christian Bale movies and two villains from the Batfleck movies, and there would basically be one villain for each movie. Uh, that isn't really possible, though, because Ben Affleck doesn't have any movies. There is Batman vs Superman and Justice League, and I guess a cameo in Suicide Squad, but he doesn't have any of his own movies, so it wouldn't be a villain representing a movie. It wouldn't be the exact same, same thing as Spider-Man. So, it would be a bit different, but let's start with the Dark Knight trilogy because that technically can be the exact same thing, with one villain representing each movie, and then there's uh, Ra's al Ghul, Joker, and Bane as the clear choices. Except for the fact that Joker is not available. Heath Ledger obviously passed away like 13 years ago, I think, 14 years ago, so he isn't available, but that does leave Two-Face. The problem with that though is that I don't think Two-Face is really much of a threat when there's three Batman, and he isn't really as intelligent or as cunning as the Joker, and also not as iconic either. So I don't think I'm going to go with Two-Face, I don't think any villains from the Dark Knight would appear. Instead I'd be going with Ra's al Ghul, Bane, as well as Scarecrow also from Batman Begins, because Scarecrow I think could add a lot to a fight using his fear gas, and also he kind of did appear in the Dark Knight, so you could say he represents the Dark Knight. I guess. As for the two villains from the DCU, the only non-Superman or Justice League villains that we saw Batfleck fight are brief fights with Joker, Harley Quinn, Deadshot, and KG Beast, none of whom I'm including, as instead I'm going to be including two characters that we never actually saw Batman fight, instead they just appeared. The first one is Deathstroke, who was supposed to be the main villain of the Batfleck movie, but obviously that movie never came out, but he looks badass, he is badass, I think that he would work very well with the fight scenes. So I definitely want to include Deathstroke. He would have a very large role. There would be three main villains, much like there's like there was Green Goblin, Doc Ock, and Elektra, who had larger roles than Sandman and Lizard. That would be Ra's al Ghul, Bane, and Deathstroke. Meanwhile, Lizard and Sandman's counterparts would be Scarecrow, as well as this next villain, Killer Croc, who would have an Elektra-style glow-up. He looked so stupid in Suicide Squad, but I want him including here because I want to see a big, scary CGI version of Killer Croc fight the Batman. And honestly, it's just so that he could look good in the fights. The DCU literally doesn't have any good villains to bring back just because they were cool villains to see, they were like good villains in those movies. They're literally, they could just be brought back because they look cool and they could be really good in fights and that's Deathstroke and Killer Croc. So the five villains are the main ones Ra's al Ghul, Bane, and Deathstroke, plus Killer Croc and Scarecrow.
Now, unlike Spider-Man, The Flash, and even Superman, Batman doesn't really have a precedent for teaming up with multiple different versions of himself from across the multiverse. Sure, we've seen him with alternate versions of himself, but they're usually evil. I mean, the biggest one are the Dark Knights, who are all evil versions of Batman who team up. Or they're super campy, like in Batman the Brave and the Bold, a bunch of different versions of Batman, like there's a Bat Hulk, there's a, I don't know, like an Aquaman Batman, it's, it's, it's campy, you can't really have three dark versions of Batman team up, as it wouldn't really be as fun as three Spideys or Flashes or Superman. I mean, you can, but it just it would be very different for Spider-Man No Way Home. And while you can have those five villains and those three heroes teaming up with that same structure, the story would have to be completely different. And I don't really know how it would work. I was thinking maybe Batmite can be involved, but these are really dark versions of Batman, and Batmite is super campy. So it could be something else. There could be like a tear in the multiverse that is it happened from a different movie. There's a Flash movie coming out this year. Maybe that movie tears the multiverse a bit. And that leads to a bit of multiverse shenanigans in Rob Bat and Bat's third movie coming out in a couple of years. Maybe the whole multiverse has multiverse shenanigans for a couple of years going forward. It doesn't really have to be Batman's personal choices that cause it like Spider-Man's do, because I don't think that really makes any sense. It wouldn't really I don't really know where that would come from. So that's it, that's Batman No Way Home, Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, and Rob Bad Bat and Bet teaming up against Ra's al Ghul, Scarecrow, Bane, Deathstroke, and Killer Croc with some sort of multiversal tear causing it. It all happens in Rob Bad Bat and Bat's universe, and by the end of it, he grows a little, he learns from the other Batman, maybe he is inspired by it, maybe he makes a new suit that is similar to those two others, inspired by their Bat logos, you know, like Tom Hall Holland was in the end. It doesn't really have to be exactly like that, but I think, you know, it would be really cool to see these three Batman team up. Uh, but let me know in the th your thoughts in the comments down below. What would you want to see from a Batman No Way Home style movie? And stay tuned because I am planning to make a Flash one and a Superman one in the coming week.